I love going to the library in my town for a lot of reasons. Free Wi-Fi, the rows of books, the peace and quiet I get away from home. All pretty great things if you ask me. The building itself is nothing to sneeze at either. It's a three-story, beautiful building that always reminded me of a castle of some sorts, with its old brick wood and stonework, spiral staircases and high arched windows and ceilings. I could spend hours in there just getting lost in all those pages on the shelves, even with the musty smell of old paper. However, I learned that not all in the library was peaceful all the time. As hard as it may be to believe, sometimes the places you think nothing bad could ever happen come under threat, and you might not even notice it. This particular Saturday started off as any other. Breakfast, a lazy pajama morning, and an afternoon at the library. I decided to go down to the fiction section on the third floor before I browsed the internet for an hour. The scuffed wood floor creaked under my weight as I walked around all those shelves. Even though I'd memorized where a lot of my favorite books were and could pick them out on autopilot, I still liked to browse around and see if there were any cool things that caught my attention. I became so immersed in the shelves around me that I failed to notice someone coming from the opposite way until I literally ran right into them. We collided hard enough that my glasses almost dropped off my face. The person I'd bumped into also dropped what they'd been carrying. Now, you'd expect a sort of meet-cute or something, right? You collide with someone and become fast friends, or even instantly flirty with your soulmate like in the movies or something. Well, that's not quite how it works in real life. Although I did look up to lock eyes with a cute girl, I could see she had a look of complete panic spread across her face. I thought maybe she'd just not been paying attention like me, so I apologized and reached down to pick up what she'd just dropped. It turned out it was a tiny can of pepper spray. The girl snatched the spray from my hand and mumbled a quick thanks, then rushed past me without a second glance. It seemed like she was in a real hurry, so I didn't try to stop and ask what was going on. She all but ran out of the room and towards the staircase. I turned around, only to be immediately confronted with a man at the other end of the corridor. Although I couldn't make out any features through the shadow of his hoodie, his eyes were as big as saucers, as if he'd just been caught with his hand in a retail tip jar, or something much worse. It was only when I took a second to really see what I was looking at that I noticed an important detail. The man's hand had disappeared down to the wrist under his jeans. It wasn't obvious from a distance, but he must have targeted that girl specifically for her to be close enough to see that he was jerking it. I felt a little bit sick. Suddenly, the girl's reaction made absolute sense. She must have felt that she was in danger, or the man had done something other than just pleasuring himself when I hadn't been looking. The man moved out of view, and I could hear him gunning it for the staircase. I don't know why, but I decided to give chase. I ran down the stairs just in time to see him slip out the front door. When I looked around the parking lot, I couldn't see him in any of the cars or on foot so I assumed he just took off. At the front desk in the lobby, the librarian was busy consoling the girl, who'd started crying. I overheard as she explained that the man had followed her up the stairs and started this little game with her when she got to the aisles, appearing at the opposite end of the shelves wherever she went and kind of trapping her in there. Always with his hand down his pants and wearing a sick grin on his face, he proceeded to slowly get closer and closer to her, so she booked it down one aisle where she ran right into me. Luckily, I'd given her an avenue where the man couldn't sneak up on her any longer, so she took the chance to book it to the front desk and hid in the back while I chased the man onto the street. At this point, she noticed me there and thanked me through the tears running down her face. I offered to walk her to her car or her bus stop, which she gladly accepted. I never saw that girl or the man again. I still like going to the library, but I'm a bit more observant of my surroundings now. I don't like to think about what might have happened, 
if I hadn't been in that exact aisle to run into that girl at the exact right time. Or if I'd just gone to the computers first. I don't know. I kind of wish the guy had been pepper sprayed anyway. Heck, I would have held him down for her, but that's not how things turned out. There's a stretch of road on my college campus, nicknamed Lights Out. It's not very original, but it is very accurate. There are absolutely no lights on this road at night, even though telephone poles lined it at every building. It seemed like no one thought lights around the backs of dorm buildings were necessary, and as such, most women I knew avoided heading down that way at night alone. As a guy, though, I didn't think there would be any problems in making lights out a regular part of my routine. I was tall and had an interest in martial arts at the time, so I was very confident I could defend myself if anything happened. However, what I experienced on Lights Out was much more complicated than what I'd ever expected. It was a regular Wednesday in the New England winter, and as such, sunset happened promptly at 3 p.m., and I was unlucky enough to have in-person night glasses that ended at 9 o'clock. That meant I'd have to traverse lights out both times in pitch darkness and bitter cold, which obviously I wasn't exactly enthused about. My dorm was located right at the corner at the far end of this infamous road, so I'd just have to suck it up and wear my gloves or something. The trek to my class buildings went fine. Like I said, the sun had already set, but there was still enough of that gray light to see by. A few folks shuffled past me in all directions, eager to get off this path before dark unless absolutely necessary. I didn't know why at the time, but I felt a lot more comfortable having so many people around this time, when normally something like that wouldn't even cross my mind. I even had a thought to call one of my buddies to walk with me back to the dorm later, but I dismissed it as just being silly. I thought the cold or stress of classes was getting to my head and chalked it up to needing to get more sleep. Classes also went fine, an advanced history lecture followed by a boring biochemistry lab. Before I knew it, it was 9pm and time to start the trek back through lights out in its final form. Beyond the lights of the science building, the street stood obscured by the dark void. It was a very cloudy night, and so there were no moon or stars to help light the way. I sighed and plugged in my headphones, then turned on the flashlight I'd brought so I didn't slip on the ground or something, and started walking. I could only see a good two feet in front of me as I trudged through a layer of snow and ice. I guess they didn't think plowing and salting were necessary features for this path either. The cold air was biting my fingers. There was absolutely no one on lights out at this time of night. Normally, I'd have no problem with that, but tonight I felt more uneasy than I ever did before. I thought about my urge to call my buddy earlier and found my finger hovering over my contacts button. I forced myself onto YouTube to change the song and drove it out of my mind once more. It wasn't that far of a journey. I was tired and maybe a little lonely, so what? I lived in a single room at the time and didn't really interact with anyone much. I'd be back at the dorm before I knew it. Suddenly though, a blinding ray of light swept across the road from behind me, a car quietly turning down it. This wasn't unusual. Most people preferred to go through lights out by car anyhow. But what really gave me pause was how slowly it seemed to crawl along as it got closer to me. I mean, it was still behind me after a good solid minute or two, and when I moved further to the side of the road to allow it to pass by, the driver didn't take the opportunity. Instead, they kept pace with me, and I started to get a little worried. I started to mentally go through everything I knew to get out of this type of scenario if they got out of the car to stand my ground, and if they tried to grab me from inside to run. Then, though, they did something I didn't expect. 
The car idled for a moment and then blew right past me with a huge screech of its tires, leaving me in the darkness. But that wasn't for long. The car turned back around and now flashed its high beams directly at me. I stumbled back in surprise and wasn't able to see anything through that blinding white haze. That's when the car drove straight towards me. I dove out of the way by instinct, but not before its bumper clipped one of my ankles. I don't remember feeling much pain at first, just scrambling through the snow away from this damn car. I even felt warm, and my heart was pumping in my ears so loud I couldn't hear anything but the car taking off again. My limbs felt heavy as I dragged myself down the street. Was everything really going in slow motion? Was that car going to come back and finish me off this time? I didn't know what to think. I couldn't. I could only afford one thought. Take cover. I dove for the nearest thing, a trash can, and cowered behind it. I knew that if the car rammed into this that it couldn't stop it completely, but at least it would take more of the impact than just my body. At least I hope so. I squeezed my eyes shut when I heard the squeal of the tires again, bracing myself. One second passed by, then two. Nearly a minute passed by before I dared to open my eyes again. I peeked over the top of the can, only to see the bright red of tail lights hauling it into the distance. They turned off lights out, and then there was nothing but darkness. I sat there for what felt like a long time, just trying to process everything that just happened. Somebody just tried to run me over, and worst of all, for no reason. I couldn't think of any reason why, other than it being a random psycho just wanting to hurt someone. As the adrenaline started to wear off, my ankle really started feeling the brunt of that hit, and I screamed. My ankle was throbbing with pain. All I could do was try not to pass out right there in the snow. I knew that would be really, really bad. I focused all my energy on breathing in and out, very slowly. When I felt safe enough to move, I reached into my pocket and dialed my buddy, something I should have done to begin with. He immediately raced out to help me. I felt like a warm blanket was creeping over the back of my head as I waited. I thought that they had to hurry. I must have blacked out for a second, because the next thing I remember was my buddy's hand shaking me and shouting my name. I flailed out to him, and once he saw I was awake, he hoisted me up, and together we hobbled down the rest of the path towards our dorm building. We all but stumbled into the office and had the startled CA call 911 for us. They even bandaged up my ankle with an emergency first aid kit. They did a pretty okay job of it, too. They questioned me as we waited for paramedics. As the incident happened on campus, they were obligated to make a formal report. I told them everything I could, but it didn't really amount to much. A random person in a car I couldn't see tried to run me down for seemingly no reason. Still, though, they thanked me for trying and promised to update me if anything came of it. I was taken to the hospital shortly after where aside from an obviously broken ankle, a couple bruises, and some shock, I was otherwise okay. They gave me some blissfully strong meds for the pain and kept me for observation for a couple of nights, after which I was sent home with my foot in a cast and some crutches. I decided to take the next week off from classes and take it easy after my experience, you know, give my foot some time to heal. My professors also seemed to agree. The biggest change I could probably make from then on, however, was never taking lights out as a route in the dark again. If that maniac was still out there, there was no way I was taking a chance of another run-in. I didn't think I would be so lucky next time. A few months ago, I was sitting on my front porch enjoying a peaceful afternoon. I live out in the country, my closest neighbors being over a mile away. It was just me and my dog watching squirrels run across the dirt road. About mid-afternoon, though, a fellow stepped out by the road and asked to enter my yard. I waved him in quickly since he seemed like a decent enough guy. 
As he approached the steps, my dog moved to block him, though. My dog was growling, and his hair was standing up on his back. This was unusual behavior for him. The man asked if my dog would bite, and I replied, He's meaner than hell, that one. He isn't mean, and he's never bitten anyone, but it didn't seem like this guy needed to know that. He stood in my yard and introduced himself as a son of a neighbor down the road a little ways. He'd moved back home to be with his mom, who was getting up there in age, and he wanted to introduce himself to the neighbors. We made some pleasant small talk back and forth, but I kept my dog right in between us. He wouldn't take his eyes off this stranger. The hair on his back was standing and his hackles were up. This put me on edge as well. I bid the fellow good day and urged him off, then walked into the house. After watching him drive away, I did a quick search of the name he gave me. It didn't take me long to find out he was a registered sex offender. I felt shivers run down my spine. Being that I have a wife and teenage daughter that he must have seen while he was out and about, I felt it necessary to call the man's mother. I kindly informed her to not allow him to be around my place anymore, or I'd have to take some action. I've always heard a dog can spot a bad person, and I really believe that now. He's a good boy. I will admit that even at my age of 47, I'm still afraid of the dark. Therefore, if I'm ever home alone at night, I can get a little nervous, so to say. I'm married with a 10-year-old daughter, and we live in a single-level home on a dead-end street. Thankfully, we do not have a basement or a garage, just a house to worry about. We live close to our neighbors, too, so I usually always feel safe. This incident happened just last month. My husband and daughter went out on an overnight Cub Scout camping trip. I stayed behind because I had to work the next day. They left the house at 5 p.m., and I was kind of looking forward to having some time alone, watching reality shows and enjoying a nice steak dinner. I settled down on the couch and enjoyed my meal. Around 6.30 p.m., though, I suddenly saw a shadow walked right by my front room window, moving quite fast. I assumed at first it was something innocent, like a small animal or a bird perhaps. I ignored it and continued watching my show. After two minutes go by and again a quick shadow moves by the same window, I started to get a little bit more concerned. This time I paused the show and got up to check what was going on. Obviously, I didn't want to go outside by myself, so I just looked out the window. I didn't see anything, though. That's when I began to hear a scratching sound at my front door. I thought to myself, okay, what is going on here? I know we have stray cats around the neighborhood, but they've never scratched at the door before. We also have raccoons, but again, they've never exhibited this behavior. Usually, they'd just run around in the backyard and look for food, which we do not have back there. I decided to check and make sure all the doors were locked. Thankfully, they all were. As I walked from the back of the house back to the front, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed someone standing at my glass sliding door that leads to the side of the home. I looked at him. There was a man just standing there peering in at me, with no expression on his face. He then creepily lifted his arm up and waved to me. I froze in place with my heart racing. What the hell was I supposed to do in this situation? I ran to the front room where I had been watching TV and grabbed my phone to call 911. I began to hear what sounded like him trying to pry the glass door open. After a few failures, he started banging on the glass. I told the dispatcher to please hurry because someone was trying to break in right now. She told me to remain calm and that the police were on their way. Right, stay calm, how can I? Someone is trying to break in and maybe kill me. 
I ran to the kitchen and grabbed the biggest knife I had and just waited. I couldn't run out the front door to the car. The man would see me and get me. He walked over to the kitchen window where I was and tapped on it. What he said to me through it will always remain in my memory. He gave me this big goofy grin and said, I will always remember where you live. Finally, the cop showed up and he took off. He didn't wear a mask, so I remembered and noted his face and what he wore. I gave all the details to the police and they took a report. So far, he's not been caught though. I told my husband what happened and we changed the lock soon after. Since this occurred, I can't get any sleep. Any little noise wakes me. I have nightmares about him breaking in and just standing over my bed, watching me sleep. I'm thinking of getting some therapy to help get over this. I was 13 when this happened, and it still gives me nightmares thinking about it. My parents wanted to go out on a date night, so they left me home alone on a Friday night. I'm an only child, so I was going to be flying solo. We had one story home with a daylight basement that had its own entrance. We live on a dead end street that's pretty quiet in the evening and not many cars come and go. We're a pretty close knit community, so I felt like I had people to rely on in case something happened while I was all by myself. My parents left around 6 p.m. for their dinner reservation, and I grabbed myself a nice hot pizza. I was ready to sit down and watch some scary movies all by myself. I was real excited. I locked the door behind them and popped on the TV. I was scrolling through the movies on my Roku app and decided to watch one of the Halloween movies first. I snuggled up in my nice warm fuzzy blanket on the couch and got comfy and began my night alone. An hour passed by and I got up to use the bathroom. While I was in there, I thought I could hear some weird noises coming from in the basement. It sounded like something was being moved around. I figured, since I was home alone, what could it possibly be? I brushed it off as nothing. I finished in the bathroom and went back to my couch to finish the movie. Another five minutes passed and again, there were moving noises from the basement. Now I couldn't ignore this. I started to get that nervous feeling in my gut. I stopped the movie to listen in on these noises closer. Oh crap, what was that? I thought about the entrance door down there and wondered if it was locked. I assumed my parents locked it or at least I hoped they did. I didn't know what to do. I took a deep breath and walked towards the basement and put my ear against the door. What a big mistake. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs immediately, and I froze in fear. This had obviously never happened to me before. I'd been home alone in the past, but that was mostly during the day. I know the obvious thing to do would be to call the cops, but did I do that? No, of course not. Instead, I ran outside and scrammed to my neighbor's house and started banging on their door. Thankfully, they were home and let me in. I was out of breath, scared, and couldn't get the words out fast enough. I asked them to please call the cops for me because there was someone in my home. They called 911 and the cops arrived within 10 minutes. I also called my parents to let them know what was going on. I let the cops check out the house and stayed at my neighbor's where I felt safe. After some time, one of the cops came over and said they didn't find anyone inside. They did say that whoever was down there seemed to have come in through the basement entrance. It must have been unlocked. Nothing was taken and everything was in its proper place. My parents got home soon after. And of course, they were very upset and scared. The cops assured us the house was clear and to lock all our doors and windows at all times. They think this person saw my parents leave and assume the house was empty. I don't want to think that this person knew I was home alone. After some thought, my mother said, Oh no, I don't think we locked the basement door. 
She just assumed since we lived in a quiet neighborhood that we were pretty safe, so she didn't worry about it at all. Needless to say, after this night, we made sure every door and window stayed locked shut. They still do leave me alone sometimes, but they always let the neighbors know when they do just in case. I still think about this night, and it gives me nightmares. I'm 16 now, and feel a little uneasy being home alone. I know eventually I'll get over it, but please be safe out there. Always lock your doors, because you don't know who's lurking around. It was a regular Tuesday night. My parents were away, and I had the house all to myself. I was chilling on the couch, binge-watching a series, when I noticed something odd outside my living room window. The street was dimly lit, but I could just about make out a figure lurking near my neighbor's house. At first, I thought it might be one of their friends or family members, you know, someone they were expecting. But the longer I watched, the more uneasy I became. This person was just kind of standing there, staring at their front door. It gave me the creeps, but being the rational person I am, I dismissed it as my imagination running wild. As the night progressed onward, I got up to grab a snack from the kitchen. That's when I heard a slight creak, a subtle noise that sent a chill down my spine. I froze. I found that my front door was slightly ajar. Panic set in, and I immediately regretted not double-checking if I'd actually locked it. I hesitated, debating whether to investigate further or call the police. Curiosity got the better of me, and against my better judgment, I tiptoed toward the door. It swung open with a soft groan, revealing an eerily quiet house. I heard a noise upstairs that sounded like footsteps. My heart pounded as I realized someone was inside my home. Fear gripped me, but I forced myself to stay calm. I retreated to a closet, and my breath caught in my throat. I was praying that whoever this was would not be able to find me. From my hiding spot, I could hear this intruder systematically moving through rooms, obviously searching for something. The tension was unbearable. I clutched my phone, ready to call for help, when I heard a noise from downstairs. It was a door slamming shut. I strained to listen, and my blood ran cold as I heard the unmistakable sound of a scream echoing in the night. My mind raced. I realized this intruder hadn't found me, but they'd seemingly moved over to my neighbor's home once again. Guilt and relief washed over me in equal measure. I couldn't believe the horrifying turn of events. I stayed hidden until I was sure it was safe, and then with shaking hands, I called the police. When they arrived, I explained what had happened. The reality hit me like a ton of bricks when they went next door. My neighbors, a kind elderly couple, had been brutally attacked. The scene was like something out of a nightmare. It wasn't a random break-in either. Nothing had been taken. The intruder had specifically targeted them. The investigation unfolded, and police caught the perpetrator soon after. Turns out he had a pretty twisted motive. The only reason he'd entered my home was because he was unsure and had at first mistaken my house for theirs. It's a chilling realization that I narrowly escaped the fate that befell my neighbors. The guilt still lingers, wondering if there's something I could have done differently. The randomness of it all. The fact that a simple coincidence saved my life that night. It's a haunting thought, and a reminder that danger can lurk in the most unexpected places, and sometimes survival is just a matter of luck. Now was the night I narrowly avoided a killer, but didn't prevent the tragedy that unfolded next door. Life can be stranger and scarier than any horror movie. This happened last night, November 15th, 2023. It was about 3.30am, 
and I was in my living room chilling on my couch watching the movie Grown Ups. Suddenly, I heard someone outside fidgeting with my doorknob. My heart literally dropped. I immediately moved over and grabbed a knife from my TV drawer that I keep for this exact reason. I'm a bit of a paranoid person. As the doorknob continued fidgeting, I bolted upstairs. I grew more terrified because I knew you could easily break the glass on my door and enter my home with no problem. Keep in mind I live in a low-income area, and I myself am low-income as well. There's no security cameras or big security doors or anything like that. I live in a small two-story loft, so there's not another door to barricade in either. My upstairs doesn't have a door. It's an open area. I dialed 911, the locks making noises the whole time. I was on the phone for about 10 minutes, whispering as loudly as I could. This person was trying very hard to break my locks. I can still hear the sounds in my head now. I don't know if they were actually trying to pick the locks or just trying to spook the shit out of me or what, but suddenly I could hear the air from the door coming upstairs. The door didn't open though. I couldn't see outside because I was too scared to look and open the blinds. At this point, my heart was racing. The operator said cops were on the way and hung up the call. I started hyperventilating. Finally, the fidgeting sounds stopped. I stayed inside and upstairs. Finally, I peeked out the window, but I didn't see anybody. In fact, I couldn't really see anything at all because it was so dark outside. The cops showed up 20 minutes later and asked me if I was on drugs right away. I was actually completely sober. I do drink lightly about three times a week, but I don't do weed or anything else. I've refused to take a sip ever since because of how spooky this was too. Anyways, at this point I was shaking. They did a simple perimeter check and just bounced right away. No fucks given at all. They only suggested I don't stay there that night. They said next time to try and get a good look at the guy. They told me he could have been a homeless thinking that the house was vacant. But how could it be vacant when you can clearly see lights on and hear a movie playing in the background? I was in the living room for God's sakes. It's scary to think that if I was drunk or something and didn't lock that front door, there would have been a random person roaming around in my place. I ended up having a major panic attack when the cops left, and I fainted. I literally couldn't sleep the whole night. Once the sun came up, I went outside. I noticed there was trash all over the place. I went to pick up all the trash and started to think to myself, had the person outside done all this? I went to look at the locks, which the cops didn't even really check. There was honestly no evidence or sign that they'd tried to pick them. There were scratches on the wall and stuff, but nothing definitive. It looked more like someone had tried to stick a credit card in or something. There was nothing else out of place. Was somebody fucking with me here? I don't know. I'm spending a few days at my mom's house. I'm pretty spooked about it. I haven't slept in almost 46 hours. Now, this happened almost 20 years ago, when I was 15 and still living back home with my grandmother and uncle. To provide some context, my grandparents had built a house together with their son, grandparents living on ground level, and their son, my uncle, living upstairs. They'd pretty much built the home with their bare hands and the help of a few family members. So, for my uncle, that meant working his 9 to 5 job, then driving to the construction site and working there until very late in the night. They did this for almost two years, and I guess the stress of working non-stop, plus an ugly divorce he was going through shortly before finishing the house, made him become quite weird. I guess he developed some kind of psychosis or something. He stopped going into work because everyone there was watching him, no one was allowed to open any windows to let in fresh air because someone could break in and all the doors in the house had to be locked at all times because otherwise gas would enter and the rooms would catch fire. 
It was lots of nonsense and paranoia like that. At the time when I was about 15 years old, I moved to live with them for a few years. Well, grandma and my uncle, my grandfather had unfortunately passed away in the meantime. Even though my uncle never did anything bad, he was a very eerie person to be around and I was regularly freaked out by him. For example, he had the habit of silently standing in a pitch dark hallway in the middle of the night for God knows how long. Sometimes I would watch TV in the living room late at night, thinking everyone else was already asleep. When I got tired, I would switch off the TV and open the door to the hallway, then scream in terror because he would be standing directly behind the door listening in in the dark. This happened quite frequently. He always acted surprised I would get so scared, because in his mind he was just keeping watch over me. Something else he did that I absolutely hated. Sometimes, when I was sleeping in my room, he would randomly barge in and check if everything was alright. And when I say barge in, I mean that literally. He would bull rush in as if he was expecting to see something horrible happening to me right at the moment. Now that you have some idea of his strange behavior, let me explain the creepiest night. I was laying in my bed sleeping. An ordinary night. I don't know how late it was, but from my feeling, I would say I had slept for a couple of hours when I suddenly woke up. I didn't really know what awoke me at first. There had been no noise or anything, but for some reason I woke up instantly terrified with my heart pounding and my eyes wide open. My breathing was fast and loud, so I tried to keep it down and listen in. I stayed like that for a couple of minutes until I'd convinced myself I'd just had a nightmare I couldn't recall. Then, though, I heard something outside my bedroom in the hallway. The bedroom door was closed. It was the distinct creaking of one particular step in the stairway, the third one from the top to be exact. Naturally, I thought it must be my uncle following his habit of creeping about the house in the middle of the night. A few seconds after that creaking, I heard super fast steps sprinting up the stairs, getting louder and louder until they suddenly came to a halt directly in front of my door. I just froze there and held my breath, half expecting my uncle to charge in at any moment, but he didn't. All I could hear was heavy breathing on the other side. My uncle must have been standing right in front of my door, but he wasn't doing what he usually did. That heavy breathing continued, and then a soft knocking began to come. This continued onward for almost an hour, and I stayed awake terrified, unable to even move an inch. Eventually, I heard the sound of my uncle moving away, but needless to say, it was very hard to try and get any sleep. To this very day, I cannot explain why he behaved that way that night. I even considered if maybe I was just having a nightmare or a lucid dream maybe. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that was a real experience. It's just very freaky. I've long since moved out, but that experience still sticks with me to this day. This may not be your typical scary story. It happened years ago when I was working as a laundry aide and housekeeper in a nursing home when I was 19 years old. It still unnerves me when I think about it. Like I said, I worked in a nursing home. This one in particular had a lot of sickly patients, either extremely dependent old folk or dementia-slash-Alzheimer-ridden people. Each room had two beds, so they could have roomies or a couple be together. If the family was really rich, they could have their own. Working there was already unsettling enough, between hearing the loud weeping at all times and seeing all the residents behaving like empty shells. It was an extremely sickly facility. I knew it wasn't their fault at all, but being so young and having no experience with this, I was very easily unnerved. There was one lady in particular, though, who always kind of scared me. I was 19, and this was my first job, so I was already a very nervous person. 
She had the room all to herself and lots of things around too, but I never saw anyone come visit her. I tried to make small talk with her to be friendly the first few times I cleaned her room or delivered her clothes. She always just ignored me or glared at me hatefully though, so I stopped trying to do so. One day, I arrived to her room to clean. When I heard her talking, full sentences, a full conversation, pauses and all. I'd never experienced this before. When I stepped in, she glanced at me just long enough to give me a very friendly smile before looking away again and staring at the ceiling. I looked around, but there was no one inside. I shrugged it off as a quirk of hers and got right to work. A few moments passed by and I heard her begin talking again. I didn't understand what she was saying, so I turned around and politely asked her, thinking she was speaking to me. Uh, were you saying something to me, miss? She abruptly stopped staring at the ceiling, furious, and didn't answer. I apologized and turned around to continue cleaning. Then she spoke again, and this time I understood her clearly. Sorry about that girl. No, I don't want you to kill her. I froze mid-wipe and felt chills go down my back. Surely I just misheard her. If we kill her, the nurses will get upset and everyone will make a big fuss. I don't feel like dealing with that right now. I remember feeling a distinct fear. I finished as fast as I could and got the hell out of there. I found my supervisor and recounted the story hysterically on the verge of quitting. She didn't believe me and thought I was just trying to get out early. She told me to take a break. I did take the time to calm down. I continued working there, but from that day on, I didn't spend more than a couple of minutes in her room when I had to clean it. Every time I did, she would be talking to someone I couldn't see, talking about killing me, and I didn't dare to interrupt her.